Many Manchester United fans are fuming after we lost to Middlesbrough and we uh, bottled our only realistic chance to win a trophy this season. Now, I personally think that we could have been 2 0 or 3 0 up by halftime, but I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about the big picture. Where does Ralph Ragnick fall into this? Because a lot of Manchester United fans in YouTube videos, uh, in subreddits, in forums are really mad and some of them are calling for Ralph Ragnick to be sacked or are just doubting his ability as a manager and as a club builder. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Now, before I start talking about this, let's start with an analogy. I feel that examples and analogies are the best way to drive a point home. Let's say you were a novelist or a songwriter or a web developer, right? A web designer. And let's say you were one of the best in the world at what you do. Let's say I put you in this house and then I told you that you had one month to work in this house. And then by the end of that month, I'll come check up on you and I want to see your best work. Let's be truthful here. Are you truly going to be able to produce your best work working in this environment? Of course not. It's cluttered, it's disorganized, it's messy. You are not going to be able to produce your best work. Now, how about if I actually gave you this house and I asked you to work in this environment? How good is your work going to be? Are you going to produce your best work? Definitely. Not only that, but I'm sure that you will be able to do it in less time than a month. Not only that, but even if I took someone who had half your ability and ask them to work in this environment and produce their best work, they would also do quite a decent job because environment matters. This environment right here is conducive to excellence, productivity, and success, while this environment right here is conducive to nothing, okay? Now, why is this important? It's because the current Manchester United environment is like this and not like this. And for us to be successful, we need someone who can turn it into this. So think of Ralph Ragnick as a Marie Kondo of football. You know, think about him as uh, some sort of minimalism and decluttering guru, right? Who is here at Manchester United in order for him to clean the mess that we are in, clean the house so that it serves as a springboard for success to whoever comes after him. You see, I'm not even bothered about Ralph Ragnick succeeding as a Manchester United manager in terms of trophies. That's not what I expect from him. That's missing the point entirely of why Ralph Ragnick has been appointed. I want him to actually clean house so that the next guy who comes in can actually be successful, right? So coming back to my analogy, if I gave you this environment, the first thing you're going to do before you even open your laptop and start working is to actually clean the mess, declutter, throw away all of the crap, clean the house, make sure that it smells nice, brew yourself a cup of coffee, let in some natural sunlight into the room, then you start working, right? Without that, there is no way you could be successful. A lot of Manchester United fans, and me myself, I'm also excited about that, are mostly caring about the transfers and who the next manager is going to be. Now, while that is an exciting uh, part of football, I don't think that th that's what's going to make a big difference for Manchester United. You could bring Holland, Mbappe and Rice to, to, to the Manchester United squad tomorrow, and yet we would still struggle. You could bring Ten Hag or Pochettino or whoever you want, and then put them in the dugout, and we would still struggle. You know, I can already see it. You know, Ten Hag, mid-November, next season, mid-November, some journalist asking him questions like, uh, Eric, uh, you came into the Manchester United uh, position with so much fanfare and so much positive positivity and so much excitement, but things didn't work out for you. Um, why is that? And then Ten Hag would be like, uh, I don't know, I mean, uh, we tried, but the standards, the standards are very low, you know, we need to be higher. Uh, come on, like, I can already see how it's going to be. It's going to be same old, same old, you know, no football manager is some sort of wizard, you know, no football manager just comes in with a magic wand, when Guardiom Leviosa, Abracadabra, and then that's it, and everything just works out well. No, the environment has to be right. So, as far as I'm concerned, Ralph Ragnick's main mission and purpose currently at Manchester United is to break the chain. Why? Because reports now are already talking about how, at Manchester United, player power is at an all-time high, at levels that were never seen before since Sir Alex Ferguson retired. During Sir Alex Ferguson's years, always, we used to say, the manager is the most important person at the club. Nobody challenged Sir Alex Ferguson's authority, but apparently that's not the case at Manchester United currently. We've seen it with Martial and Lingard literally coming into back and forth 
through the press with Ralph Ragnick, right? Uh, Anthony Martial literally did not go to Ralph Ragnick's office to tell him that he wanted to leave. He actually had his agent talk with the board, directly with the Glazers. That's how disconnected Manchester United currently is. Cristiano Ronaldo in his Sky Sports interview talked about how he's shocked by the low standards and expectations at Manchester United, that many players actually don't stay after training to actually work and improve. And that's what actually made Cristiano Ronaldo the player he is. But famously, many Manchester United players did that, uh, staying in to work on set pieces, for example, as in the case with Cristiano Ronaldo and uh, David Beckham, or staying in to work at the gym in order for you to build your body. The, uh, David De Gea did it. When he came the first season, he was very thin like a needle. He had to work hard after training in order for him to reach the standards required for him to be a success at Manchester United. But apparently this is not happening. A lot of people have been praising Ole Gunnar Solskjaer for leaving the club in a much better shape than it was uh, under um, Jose Mourinho, but I'm not sure that's the case. I think it's in an even worse state because Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was such a nice guy that a lot of players just dropped their standards. He was so lenient, so easygoing, that the players simply have no respect for the manager anymore and they have no standards for themselves. They know that they are being paid anyway. They don't want to do the work. They don't want to work hard. And by work, I'm not talking about running and chasing back, but I'm talking about keeping your standards high and doing whatever it takes for you as a professional footballer to be at peak shape and to be at the best level you can actually be at. So currently, the soil at Manchester United is very toxic. It's not fertile enough. You can get the best seeds in the world. For example, Donny van de Beek, Jadon Sancho. It won't matter. Because whenever you plant those seeds in a toxic soil, they are not going to grow into fruit-bearing trees, right? So we need to actually fix the soil first. Manchester United right now is like trying to grow trees in the desert. They won't grow, no matter how high quality your seeds are. And Ralph Ragnick is just the right guy to do that. He's the best in the world at doing exactly what we currently need, which is rebuild the structure of the club, set the expectations. Because he's done it with two clubs who were complete unknowns in the world of football, Offenheim and RB Leipzig, and they still reap the benefits and the fruit of the hard work and the foundation and the groundwork that he's done with them back when they were in the third and fourth division of German football. So he is definitely the right guy because this is technically his specialty. This is what he does best and this is where he has proven results. Okay, he's, a, he's got a track record of success in this area right here. So Manchester United fans, don't panic. Don't lose faith in Ralf Ragnick. Let me remind you of one other Ralf Ragnick disciple, Jurgen Klopp. When Jurgen Klopp came to Liverpool, his first full season, he finished eight. And the next seasons after that, two seasons after that, in fact, he finished in the top four. So he did not just come into Liverpool and then with a quick snap, everybody at Liverpool just knew how to play Gengen -Gen Press style and they were as dominating and as good as they currently are. No, you have to be realistic. Those things need time. For a manager to implement their tactic and their patterns of play, it needs time. It needs time for you to get the right players with the right attributes and the right personalities, right? Everybody at Liverpool knew that Jurgen Klopp could not play, play Gengen Press with, I don't know, Benteke, Mignole, Colo Toure, and aging Steven Gerrard. No, he could not. Impossible. So he had to actually clear some of the deadwood and bring new players who fit into this style. Same thing with Ralf Ragnick. What do you expect? Manchester United to play beautiful football, attacking football right now? He didn't even have a preseason, doesn't have the right players. And like I said before, the atmosphere is just toxic. The environment is toxic. It's not conducive to success. So give Ralf Ragnick a chance to break that chain because we cannot go forward without this change. It doesn't matter who we bring in, they will have the same issues as Ralf Ragnick is having, as Ole Gunnar Solskjaer had, as uh, Jose Mourinho had, or uh, Louis van Gaal had before them, right? Change is long overdue, and the best man to spearhead that change is Ralf Ragnick.